If you've been confused by the Prop 29 television ads, you're not alone. Doctors in white coats telling you Prop 29 is bad for California. Well, on the yes side, cancer survivors urging voters to support the initiative. Take a look. I'm against smoking, so I thought Prop 29 was a good idea. Then I read it. It raises $735 million in tobacco taxes. But not one penny goes to new funding for cancer treatment. Instead, it creates a huge new research bureaucracy with no accountability, run by political appointees who can spend our tax dollars in other states. It's this simple. A yes vote on Prop 29 will save lives, provide cancer research money, and keep our kids from smoking. Prop 29 will lead to a 13.7% decrease in youth smoking. Proposition 29 will help save the state almost $6 billion. A yes on 29 will fund research for tobacco-related illnesses. If it wasn't for cancer research, I might not be alive today. Joining me is Deborah Kelly, Senior Director of Advocacy and Health Initiatives with the American Lung Association, and Jennifer Jacobs with Americans for Prosperity. Now, let's start with you, Deborah. You, of course, mm -hmm. support Prop 29. Mm -hmm. Tell us, what does it do, and why is it a good thing for California? Well, basically, Prop 29 will raise the tax on tobacco products. So if you smoke cigarettes, you'll pay a dollar more a pack. 75 cents of that will go into research into tobacco-related diseases like cancer, stroke, heart disease, emphysema. 20 cents will go into programs that will keep kids from smoking and help people quit smoking. Three cents will go to law enforcement, and then administrative costs will be capped at 2%. Two cents. Two yes. cents. Okay. Jennifer, you don't like Prop 29. How come? Well, we believe that this is a flawed initiative and that it's just another tax increase that creates a whole other bureaucracy that's not accountable to taxpayers. Right now, the state of California, run by Sacramento politicians, has got us in a $16 billion deficit right now. Over the course of the last four years, $20 billion has gone unfunded in education, even more in healthy family programs. And just creating one more government bureaucracy that is filled with political appointees by those same Sacramento... Well, how, how is this not accountable, though, if, if, Deb, if what Deborah just told us, where mm -hmm. this is where the money goes, 2% to administration, how is this just another government bureaucracy? Well, they, but there is no oversight to this whatsoever. There is no one that is going to ever be able to say, how do you know? How do we, get, how do we guarantee that, that it is true? There is nothing in here because you don't have any oversight by any taxpayers and no oversight to where there's ever going to be a public hearing where these people can be fired by the taxpayers if they're so not doing their job. So does your group not like the tax or does it not like the fact that there's no oversight? Because I, I know that the history of your group in terms of um, uh, the Americans for Prosperity has a history of not supporting any kind of initiative that would ban cigarette smoking in the workplace, that would increase. Okay. Well, so, well, I mean, this, all, is, this is what the group wait, wait, does, though. Okay, no, that, and, and, and let's make this very clear. What you're talking about is something, I mean, I worked in the legislature when the cigarette ban went through, went through and this organization didn't even exist back then. So let's be, let's be clear. Well, it, it actually, I mean, your organization has... Uh, in, California, in, in California, Americans for Prosperity in California is, has 100,000 members in California. We don't receive money from our national counterpart. And the California Americans for Prosperity is opposed to anything that does not hold Sacramento politicians accountable for the budget deficits that they have created and the fact that taxpayers have been left holding the bag for their wasteful spending. And so what we do not want is any more taxes that go to flawed initiatives and Band-Aid approaches to solving the problems. Of course, we, we support cancer research, but what we want to make sure is that m the money that goes into the state coffers is accountable. And right now, there is nothing in the state that is accountable. And the l last p thing we ever want to do is have more political appointees by those same Sacramento politicians that have gotten us into this I, I want to give Deborah a, a chance to respond to this and then and then follow up on some of what you said as well. Yes, yeah. I, you know, a lot of these arguments actually have nothing to do with Prop 29 whatsoever. You know, this doesn't have anything to do with Sacramento politicians. It doesn't have anything to do with addressing the deficit. It's not intended to. We have, we have built in a lot of safeguards to protect this money from being stolen away by the legislators because we understand the temptation that that represents. Now, as far as accountability, 
there will be a, a nine-person commission that will oversee all of the expenditures. These are not going to be politicians. They're going to be people like the chancellors of the University of California system, the heads of the um, NCI-funded cancer centers, two patient advocates, a physician. And there will be yearly audits by the state of California. And everyone will know exactly where all of the money goes, just oh. as everyone knows exactly where the money goes from. Um, our current Prop 99 funding. I just tax. want to step in there because I want to talk a little bit about who's funding this campaign because it has been a contentious issue that we know that that, that the tobacco industry, in fact, has funded no against Prop 29, $40 million, four to one in terms of funding. Do you think that what the no to Prop 20, 29 campaign makes, the arguments that you make, are somewhat tainted because this no is being funded by the tobacco industry? Well, I, I, I mean, as, as a as a representative of Americans for Prosperity, I don't work for that campaign, and nor do I get paid by that campaign. I am, an, I am a volunteer with Americans for Prosperity, and I'm a taxpayer advocate. And what I'm saying to you is that there is th this panel, this commission they're talking about, this whole thing is flawed because it's all appointed by Sacramento politicians. This isn't appointed by taxpayers. It's appointed by Sacramento politicians, the, one that's got, the people that have gotten us into this problem. And we can't do, if there are flaws in this, if there are flaws beyond what we've already been talking about, if the money isn't spent the way, we can't do anything about it until 2027. I'm going to have to step in there because we are out of time, but I do want to send people to kpbs.org because there's a much longer conversation with both of you on the radio with Maureen Cavanaugh. Also, we will link so people can read about this. They can see for themselves what this is all about. Thank you both for being here. Thank you. Thank you.